Hi, hello, and welcome back. Good day. All right. So last time we left off doing layouts with um, material design, and that's that's going to be the end of layout, doing layouts with material design, the end of the intermediate section. So we're going to now go to the advanced section, advanced section, and we're going to start talking about section three um, of um, chapter three, chapter three being on HTML, section three. Um, advanced, we're going to start talking about forms and then some present, some other multimedia tags and some other tags. So let's um, close off where we are now. So um, this we're on, as you can see here, material layout. We're, that's the branch we're on for Git. And our repository should be clean because we save everything. And so I can do this from the command line. So let me go from the command line. And if you look here, you're going to see. Um, my directory I'm in. I could do print work in directory. And so I'm in, in the intermediate directory and this is telling me my prompt is telling me at all I'm in a git branch called material layout. And so I'll go back up and I'll just go to advance and so advanced. So if I can spell. So um I'm still on this branch, even though I changed directories. This directory is empty um, for those who know Linux and stuff. This directory is empty. So all I did was I went up to my directory before I got on and I did an MKDIR and you can barely see here in the color scheme, but whatever. I created a directory. Anyway, um, so let's do this. Uh, we want to start um, by working on um, chapter three. So let's see Git check out and branch at the same time and we're going to say we want to check out start with section 03 chapter 03 um, section 03 okay so that's where we want to start and so we switch to that branch now and we're in the advanced directory we don't have any files or anything there uh, if i guess if we wanted to we could copy the files we were working with before and start up but we wouldn't do that so um what i want to do though before i continue um you know here it's kind of reset a little bit and so let's reset a little bit and so we're covering html forms and i figure one of the things to do is to just say let's get um idea what we're talking about and so this is a paper form and you can see there are lines here with some label that says you know put your name here and your address here and so on and you obviously seen this before and so why am i showing you this well, I kind of want to show you different paper forms and some of the um, things you might be expected to fill in. Like here, you just see some text boxes, some lines to fill in. Here, you see a checkbox, right? That's different. And so, um, basically, what a form is, HTML form, is a representation of a paper form. And then, because it's digital and it's online, it gives you some more things that you might not have on a paper form. For example, you can see list and drop down boxes. Uh, on a digital form, HTML form, and that's not possible with a paper form. Oh, and you've seen those before. These are your, your forms on a website where you can like select city because they're pre-populated with a number of choices and you have to select from, from that. And you have things like progr progress bars and so on, labels you can use to present information to people, and you suddenly have buttons. And, okay, so that's my son in the background. He's downstairs and screaming. And so here's an example of a digital form, and you can see there's a checkbox, and there's the boxes for you to type things in. It might show up as boxes or lines, but here's the list box or drop-down box I mentioned, right? Combo box, there are different names for them, but they all mean the same thing. Um, drop-down box, combo box, selection box, whatever. And so you can have a number of credit cards populated here because, you know, you know what they are, and so you want to use, just choose from one. And here's another digital form and here you have country populated and can only so many and we know what they are you could choose from there and so on with birth dates and so on right and um the difference between how why a form might html form might look different is because of the browser the and um, the platform so basically your os and the ui library that you use and so if you go from use the same browser a like firefox uh, but you go to different platform, Linux, Mac, uh, Windows, the, the form would look different just because those platforms render different UI controls, we call them, differently. Now, um, if you use a, um, a particular um, UI library, you can wrestle back some of that control and make your application look the same across browsers and across platform. And we'll talk more about that later. And so here's another digital form. 
And so here's how you write a basic HTML form. Um, and so um, you just use the form element and then you nest it in it some form control tags, right? So for example, you have the label tag and this for attribute, give it the value and the value just happens to match up with the name, the value you give for the name attribute here on the input um, element. And so that would give you a very basic form. And so you see three form controls already, label, input, and button. I'll allow you to take actions. And so this type is submit. You can have reset button and there's the label you give for that button. And so if we go over here and we see what this might look like when it's rendered, here's our label. Is our box so we can type in and that's the save button. So that's the basics of form. So let's get back now and actually do it and put it in code, right? So uh, let me come back now with um, my screen laid out a little bit better. I gotta switch monitors and we're gonna do just that. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. Okay, so um, we're back now at our code and this is where we left off. So let's switch directory to our we want to say open folder and go to our advanced directory. So we can go up one and then we're going to choose advanced. And so there's nothing here, no code, but I'm going to say file new and I'm going to call this file. Um, actually, when it's ready to save it, command save, I'm going to call it index.html. I have some code here I'm going to paste in. I don't have to spend type, just type in it and select all of it. And then I'm going to say beautify. And so all this is very simple code. So all this is, is, you know, the title tag, ignore all these other stuff. I mean, those, uh, we, we saw an other example where we did the layout stuff, but you can ignore that until we really talk about it. But that, that's not important. That's just information for your web browser. And so about, you know, the language and so on. Um, the style tab we talked about before too, when we did layout uh, thing. So here I have an outer tag and because I have pong means this is ID I'm going to use on this element and this is a div element. And I said the width is going to be the full width of the screen. And then whatever is inside of this, um, div should be centered. And then, um, I have an inner tag again, ID, and I am going to say, I want it to be displayed in line block and the width is just 48. So fix the width and um, the border style is solid. So what that allows me is if I should um, render this now, um, now you can see my form looks like this. And even if I change the width of the screen, it stays in the center and with a back border, okay? And this is the same code from what I showed in the presentation of how you do a basic form. And so I can type in this box and I could sit submit. Of course, we don't have any place to submit this to because we didn't cover that yet, how do you actually send this to some place to be stored. Okay, so this is a big form. And we're gonna cover some more form elements, but there's a number of other things you can do. Um, you can give a default value, for example. So you can say, for example, value and default value, for example. I'm gonna save this, and then now you can see my value appears in here. Um, I can also do placeholder. There's no point in doing placeholder and default value. And that could be something like instruction, like enter a value, for example. Let's see that. And so this shows up, they've slightly faded here. And once I start typing, it goes away. Uh, the difference between the placeholder is this is not, actually if I just submit this form like this, uh, this, this is not considered the value. And so it wouldn't be sent, sent to save. But if I had a value, then that'd be sale and that way you can do default or pre-populate a field. And so we have a number of other types of input. As you can see, the type here says text. Um, you can do number, you can do checkbox, you can do um, password. So for example, if I type in this box, you can see exactly what I type. You wouldn't want to use the file password field because you wouldn't want someone to be typing their password and if someone else is looking over their shoulder, see the password. So now, when I type, you don't even know what I'm typing. And so that's a password field. And um, so, okay, so there, that's, that's a basic form. All right, so one of the other things I wanna show you is, oh, you can do forms in, um, with other libraries, right? So we talk about Bootstrap and we saw how to populate a Bootstrap library. So let's do this. So we have saved this 
and let's um, we can go to the command line if we, if we want but let's do it from within here we're gonna say um, oh man my mouse is not moving up. I'm gonna say commit this and I'm gonna say basic HTML form and then I'm gonna say I want to create another branch and I'm gonna call it um, you know bootstrap form and so let me um, get some code here for the bootstrap form. So I don't really have to spend time typing it up. And I'll paste it. And most of this is just boilerplate code. So this you saw before, this is just there from before, nothing new. Bootstrap form, I changed the title. And this is uh, required by the bootstrap library, which we went to their website and we just copy and paste that in when we did the layout. Again, this script required by bootstrap, you just copy and paste that. So the only thing that's really new is what you see inside here. And let me beautify this. And that's basically, now we have a form where we talked about this when we did the bootstrap. You could do container, container fluid. Um, and then I have a row, because in bootstrap you have to say a row and a cell. I'm gonna say my cell is, you know, I could say take over the entire screen or I could say it's MD6 and then call on that MD dash tree dash I think offset is one of the things you can do to say that how we want to center it um, so um, and I get that sense but anyway um, what, did I, what did I do was wrong anyway I have to look it up um, maybe it's offset dash tree I, I have to look it up um, so that's not the important thing really what's important is that you can use another library to um, to do your layout, right? And so um, the way you do it in Bootstrap now is you'd say, you'd group your label and input together in this with a class, in a div and say form group. And that just tells Bootstrap how to be able to lay out your control. And as you can see, what it means for Bootstrap is it gives you control these nice rounded edge, you know, the buttons that have a certain look. You can do other things too. You can do something like btn-primary, save that. And here you see a button look different. You can do warning, I think. And your button look like that. You can do info. Right? And so you have all these different ways in which to populate different types of buttons. And I can show you where you're gonna get out of that information. I just wanna show you, again, a basic layout because as I go forward and cover out of control, I'm not gonna go back and show you how to do it in Bootstrap on, or any other UI library. You would know how you can do the same thing in those UI library. So let's see where you find this information about Bootstrap. If you remember, we went to getbootstrap.com and it says getting started and it told us what to put there, right? And that's exactly what you see I have on the other page, right? Um, but if you look at CSS and you scroll along and you look at forms, they tell you how to do basic forms, right? You group inside form, you create a div and you group label and inputs and they show you different kind of examples of email and password and files and checks box and so on, right? And they show you inline forms and the other things, right? So you can see horizontal forms, you can see how to space it. So there's your example of how you do it. Um, tons of different type of thing, help doing help text, Buttons, here are your buttons, basic buttons and links, right? Buttons and links, and there's your default button, primary and so on, I showed you some of them, I didn't show you success, right? I didn't show you danger, but those are examples, right? Um, and then you can even do very fancy things like this, right? Um, being able to put check boxes and, you know, at sign or a dollar sign in front of something, if you want somebody to enter, give them a hint about what they're entering, um, they're gonna be entering. All right, and you can also go to components and find even more information on um, doing button groups and input groups and so on, All right? And so you can do things like this, All right? So that's, that's Bootstrap and that's where you find that information. Now, the last one I wanna show you is uh, material. So um, let's commit our changes and this is modify, commit. And this is bootstrap form. And let's do create a branch, call it and let's 
let's go here and grab some code. Close this for now. And so this is the AngularJS material form. Again, the script analysis other stuff, um, you saw how we did that for the layout. The only thing that's really different here is in the center here. And so these few lines. And so for boot for AngularJS material, you say I have a layout and it's gonna be columnar, you know, up, um, up and down and then inside that you have a form and then you have input control just like how bootstrap have a div and then you say input group here you say md input container and within the container you have a label and you have input uh, md input uh, you have input you can use md input then you have a button and now we can take a look and see how our form looks now using this library uh, refresh and very different right look at this the effects you get. So both, so just using pretty much the same thing, you can do, and this is where you, how you control the look and feel of your form or application across browser. Because if you use Bootstrap or you use Material, even if you go to different platforms, you know, Linux, Mac, whatever, and you use different browser, they are gonna pretty much look the same. So how do you get some information on AngularJS or Material at AngularJS? And you can go look at the demo controls and you can see what inputs look like and there are a number of different types of inputs and defaults and so on and they show you how they can do validation so this input is saying until I can accept up to 150 correctly but I so far I have only 102 All right um, and so you get you get the idea All right um, buttons um, different types of buttons um, there's buttons, buttons there. Um, show you different type of game, primary button, warning button, and so on. You don't have the info button, but you can style your button however you like to convey the meaning. So again, um, right now the example I have, the button is kind of flat. Even though you move over it, you could see it. But other than that, you, you don't see it. And I can do class equals MD raise. And if I save that, you see now my button look a little raised. Um, actually, that's not it. MD raise. Okay, let me see refresh. Okay, there we go. See my button look raised now. Um, it got like a border around it. I don't have to put my mouse over it to see if it's a button. Um, and then I could do MD dash primary. I think that also um, work when I refresh. Yep. So again, yet another way to do things. So I've shown you basic forms. I show you how to do basic forms in Bootstrap, basic form in um, Angular JS Material. Next, I'm going to show you even more form control, but it's going to be the HTML form control. And then now you know where you can go to find out how to do. When I show you checkbox in HTML, you can say, "Oh, I, I think that looks boring. I want to use this checkbox." Well, come here. And look and see how to do this checkbox. Well, you can look at the code here if you like, view code, or you could just scroll down. See demos. Um, it says directors. You scroll along, and you can see here checkbox, MD checkbox or whatever it's gonna have, right? Um, MD checkbox. So you can see exactly how to put a checkbox for a thing, and you can do the exact same thing here for Bootstrap, right? Just go look up how they do um, checkboxes if they have any checkbox control, right? All right, so that's it. And I'll see you in the next video uh, where we cover more of these using some basic HTML control. If you're anxious and you wanna go ahead and research this yourself, you can go to W3C school here and then HTML reference. And then um, this alphabetical listing of the controls. Um, and you can look for form. There we go, form. And then uh, they show you some of the form elements, right? Input, area, button, select, option, option, group, label. And then you can play with it because from right here, if you want to see what the area, text area one look like, just click on it and they show you how to use text area. If you want to see how to use option group, click there. You want to see how to use a select, which is a drop down combo one I told you about. You can click there and they show you how to use it.
like all right so see you in the next video and take care try these out bye let me know if you have any problem oh before i go i'll just commit my changes here on this branch and commit and then i'll say angular js uh, material basic form and bam and um, that's it see you in the next video